It has literally been almost a year since I started dialysis and I think I've learned a few things. Hi everyone, welcome back to Vlogmas. In today's video, I am going to be basically going over some of the things I've learned about myself and my planning style in this last year of becoming a home hemodialysis patient. For context, I literally started my home hemodialysis training on January 9th. I knew last year when I was filming Vlogmas that I was going to be starting training. I probably could have been able to squeeze it in a little earlier than that, but I wanted to just get through the holidays before starting. And to be fair, I probably would have felt better if I had started before the holidays because I was in a miserable place, but it also kind of lined up neatly with the new year, so that's cool. What I didn't expect was how long it was going to take myself and my husband, who's my care partner, to kind of get our footing. I thought it would be a month or two. Jess and I are both really good at picking things up quickly, and I had just assumed that doing dialysis at home would be the same thing, and we would be like rolling and rocking and rolling, rolling and the rolling stone, however you want to put it, within a month or two of coming home. And we came home at the beginning of February. Instead, only in the last month or so have we finally started to feel like we have our feet under it. So almost an entire year. I wasn't expecting that. And the other thing I wasn't expecting as much as, I expected a little, I wasn't expecting it to impact me quite as much, was how this new kind of life was going to impact both how I plan and how my planning interacts with my life. Like the necessariness of planning, the things about planning that are important to me. So that's what we're going to reflect on today. Before we do though, I'm going to challenge you right up front here. This was a really interesting exercise to go through. I sat down with a piece of paper, I put a line and then another line and all I did was write what I value, what I don't value. And I started listing things. If I came up with something that I valued, I wanted to make sure to kind of find what was the thing that I stopped valuing that sort of was the counterpart of that and vice versa. So sit down with a piece of paper and a cup of coffee or something and just start thinking through the last year with you planning. What is it that came to the surface? What is it that you realized was the most important things about you in terms of planning, in terms of the functionality of planning, in terms of the hobby of planning, in terms of all of it? Figure out what you're valuing, and then on the same note, start to think about the things that you really stopped valuing this year, the things that were just not as useful or helpful or important to you. Just list them out. It doesn't have to make any sense, but if you get that out of your head and you look at it, you might start seeing some trends which might help you as you move into the next year with how you approach everything. With all that to say, let me talk about some of the things I discovered I value and the things I don't value when it comes to my personal planning style. I should also note, these are in no particular order. First and foremost, I have discovered that I value convenience in my planner. I value not having a bunch of shit to like rifle through, not having to make a bunch of decisions, not having to sit and stare. It's part of the reason I think I have gravitated towards just a highlighter and a pen these last few months is because I love stickers, but hunting for the right sticker and then hunting for the right sticker and then hunting for the right sticker every single time has just, it irks me. <laughs> <laughs> convenience in the stuff I'm using in the planner and convenience in the planner itself. Easy access. I have a house that has, it's like an, a 70s style house, so it has multiple levels, including the basement where my office is, and at the very top back corner of my house, what might be a turret if it was a castle, is where my dialysis room is. And I'm in all of these different places every single day, and I'm exhausted all the time. So having a planner that is just easily with me, that I don't need a bunch of shit to update, the convenience of it has become like a top value in my life when it comes to planning. And on the opposite end of that, the the, out, the outward aesthetics of the planner is something I just don't value. And it's funny because this year, my planner's aesthetics have been very special to me because I designed the cover of this Moxie Life and I love looking at it. But to be fair, my planner spends most of its time open, so I don't really look at it as often as I would want to, which is kind of a bummer because again, I think it's really pretty. But like, I discovered this year that as much as I don't really like wire O binding, I don't really care that much about having wire O binding, which is funny because next year's Moxie Life doesn't have it anymore. But like the aesthetics of the planner, aside from it being neutral, I just don't care. I, it's, there's other things in my life that I care more about at the moment. And it was really refreshing to be able to sit and articulate that to myself when I was writing everything down. Speaking of Moxie Life, something I value hugely this year, 
hugely as my life has been like up and down and up and down and up and down is the goal setting systems in both the Moxie life, which are my personal goals, and the HB90 system, which are my work goals. Both of these goal setting systems have been integral to me staying on top of my life when everything has been just spinning out of control. Even if I don't keep up with the check-ins, even if I struggle to keep up with the systems sometimes, having all of it kind of laid out so I can go back to it and recenter myself has been incredibly helpful this year as my life has just completely shifted. Being able to check in with my monthly priorities for whichever system I'm using, being able to look back at my yearly priorities to be able to go and make changes, being able to look at what I wanted to get done in the week. All of these things helped me help to me remember that my life is more than just dialysis because sometimes it feels like its own job that I'm paying for. Having these goal setting systems really helped kind of ground me in everything in my life and my work that I find important. But going back to that, one thing I also came to the conclusion I don't necessarily value as much are the actual planners associated with those systems. The systems are very important to me. The planners are not as crucial specifically meaning like the weekly and in the case of the HB90 daily planners. I knew I didn't really like the HB90 actual planners, not that there's anything wrong with the planner, it's just not my style, but what I didn't realize so much was that I was finding that the Moxie Life was, it was okay, but it wasn't crucial the way the goal setting stuff in the Moxie Life was. So. We're gonna talk more about this when I get to my planner lineup for next year, but in the meantime, that was another thing that I wasn't quite aware of until I articulated it to myself, was that the goal setting is the crucial part, not the actual planner. Moving to my digital stuff, I discovered quite, quite strongly this year, when I went back to Notion, how much I value my Notion HB90 system. I just did a video talking about how to set that up for yourself if you want to. It's a very basic tutorial, really going into why databases are so important in Notion. I have Notion systems now for my, for my art, for my content, for my goal setting for HB90, and I am starting to fiddle with it for my Moxie Life goal setting as well. Let me know if you're interested in that. The reason Notion was so important to me when I went into this year with ClickUp as my project management system is that ClickUp is great. However, it was harder for me to use one-handed on my iPad while I'm on dialysis. This is the key here. Notion as a system has been incredible for me being able to get work done one-handed while I'm on dialysis. It was a struggle that I had for the first like chunk of the year until I made the change. And then it was a little rough trying to get everything set up. But once everything was set up, it like it worked. And that was something that I didn't necessarily consider at the beginning of the year when I knew I was going into dialysis. There's one thing knowing you're going to be doing dialysis and being stuck in a chair without being able to move your arm three to four hours a day for five days a week. And quite another thing to actually be in it. And when I was in it, I learned very quickly that A, I need games on my iPad that I can poke at with one hand because trying to play your Switch like this when you can't bend one of your arms is a bit of a pain in the butt. And B, having things that don't work the way I need them to when I need them to is very frustrating when you are stuck and a chunk of your day is sucked up by this and Notion solved that problem for me and I, I don't see myself changing out of it anytime soon. Thinking about my digital stuff though, what I didn't value this year as much and what I still don't value as much this year is my Google Calendar. Now I use it, it's great to keep all of my appointments in there, but using it for anything else has just not been my thing. Having somewhere to write down what's going on in my week and like think about it that way, my brain, I swear, has turned into mush since starting kidney failure and now dialysis. Like it's so easy for me. I, have, I had mom brain after I had my kids and then of course, as my kids have gotten older, I've continued to have scatter mom brain. Dialysis brain and kidney fog brain are no joke. And having the ability to write things down has helped cement things in my mind. My Google Calendar used to be really helpful for me in planning a bunch of other shit as well as aside from appointments, like when do I wanna go for a walk? When do I wanna do this? When do I wanna do that? It's always been helpful for me for that. Not anymore, because I don't look at it that way anymore. I just use it to keep track of my appointments. And even then I have to rewrite them so that they really, really stick in my head because if I try to free ball it with just my Google calendar, I miss shit. It's happened. 
multiple times this year. One thing I've discovered I do value, even though I haven't been super consistent at it, but when I am consistent at it, it's been really helpful, is tracking my habits, the things that I want to stay on top of. And also, more so than starting new habits, tracking things I need to be doing anyway. For example, in 2024, I plan to start tracking, taking my meds in my planner, purely because I have, in the past several months, missed my meds on more than one occasion. And Jesse gets very frustrated at me for that because he doesn't want me to die. <laughs> and I have a lot of meds to take and not taking them can be problematic. So tracking things in my planner, doing the physical check mark, seeing it in the morning, seeing it in the afternoon is really, really important for me, especially on the things I thought that I had under control, but I don't. Watering my plants and meds are the two right at the top of my list right there. What I don't value so much though, is tracking my dialysis shit in my planner. I had this giant plan and I tried it multiple times this year to write all my dialysis shit down, to have my own dialysis planner, to have places I wrote it down, to track when I treat, did treatment, when I did for my work planner, I was like, well, I wanna track on the days I had treatment so I can see what the work looks like that day, put it in my planner. No, 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 no. I need to put down that I've had dialysis like, or that I'm going to for the sake of planning my day, but I don't need to track all that shit because I have a sheet every day that I do dialysis where we fill out all the info, blood pressure, temperature, weight, both before and after and all during. Like it's, I, when I go to my clinic, I don't need to bring a notebook with all of my dialysis shit. It has a place for all my symptoms. It has a place for things that happened on dialysis, the things that happened the day before, the things that happened later that day. It's an entire diary each day that I have to take to my clinic. <laughs> I don't need to write that down twice. I don't have that fucking kind of time. Something else I valued quite a bit was being in the habit of planning. Looking at a planner every day, you know, checking, see what I have going on, really just kind of orienting myself first thing in the morning. I need that. I need that to kind of, I said it before, to ground myself. That is kind of a theme here. I need something to kind of be a through line in my life as it is entirely unpredictable. I can set a plan at the beginning of the week. It doesn't mean it's gonna follow that plan. This week has already gone off the rails as of yesterday, like when I was filming this. I'm on the second day of the week and the first day of the week I lost a filling and my whole week had to change. Being in the habit of checking in with my planner, making changes if I need to, remembering the things I have to do that day. It's, it's a practice that is very centering for me. And while it always has been, this year, the value of it has been extremely high. And I feel like, comparatively speaking, I underappreciated how centering that habit was for me until this year. This year is the year that it really kind of hit home how important it was to be in that habit. But on the same note, what I don't value is needing to fill every single page up all the way. I used to, I, and it wasn't just a question of aesthetics. It wasn't just a question of making sure there was a sticker or some lettering or something so that it looked like a full spread. When we do my flip through of my Moxie Life later this month, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Like I used to think a full page, not a no white space page, but like a full page just was the bomb, man. And I don't feel that anymore, but more to the point, it's not just the aesthetic of it. It's also the stuff. I have always been somebody that doesn't know how to say no to an opportunity when it comes to like volunteering and shit. I'll say, I'll, I'll raise my hand before I even stop to consider whether it was a good idea or not. The only way I can seem to manage life is by being go, go, go all the time. And this year, I physically can't do that. Physically, I like, last year I physically couldn't do it, but I kept trying. This year, like, not only do I not have the predictable energy, but I also, again, have a big chunk of my week sucked up with dialysis so that it just negates a bunch of things I could potentially do. And so filling my planner up from the perspective of being productive is also something I have no value for because, because it's not good for me. It is physically and mentally not good for me. And I have need, I need to come to terms with that. And this is the year I think I'm coming to terms with that. I don't think I'm there yet, but I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Now, one big thing, and I've talked a lot about my kidney fog, my brain fog. One big thing that I've come to highly value is having somewhere that I can find where I can write my to-dos down. Again, it goes back to Notion, holding all of my work to-dos and also having my planner and post-it notes to keep track of like my regular to-dos. Writing them down, whether digitally or physically, having a place to keep them, having a kind of capture system, even if it's a Mickey Mouse horse shit capture system, <laughs> Uh, has been extremely important because I cannot trust my brain to keep track of anything right now. If somebody asks me to do something and I don't write it down, 
the chances of me forgetting it are like 85%. And that's generous. <laughs> it's, it's, again, very frustrating for my family. Because for a lot of this year, I was like, I'll remember to do that. And then I don't. And I'm one of those people that it takes a bunch of times, a bunch of times to fuck up before you're like, maybe I should change this. But now as I'm reflecting, it's really become clear to me that having somewhere to keep track of my to-dos, being diligent about writing things down as they come up, never assuming I have that kind of brain space. Somehow I can still remember song lyrics, even though that's starting to go too. I swear to God, dude, like it's, Anyway, I couldn't remember an actor the other day, and normally that's my pride. Like, I can't remember shit, but I can remember the actors and all these things, and apparently that's going too. So yeah, that's really something I value right now. What I don't value is assigning my to-dos to specific days, unless I absolutely have to. That I've, been, I've played with like a single priority each day, three to a top three for each day. I've played for that all year, and ultimately what I'm discovering is that it can be very difficult for me to keep to schedule to-dos out that aren't like very specific to that day because I cannot predict what my day is gonna look like. The only days I really can predict with any certainty are the non-dialysis days. Those tend to be the most consistent good energy days. Those days fill up and I have no space to myself. And then if I have any bad days throughout the rest of the week, it's like they just start gathering everything that needs to be done that day. And it's really overwhelming. So. I need to figure out a better way to approach to-dos in the new year, but I do know now that scheduling them on specific days ahead of time, assuming I know just because I know what the weather is and I know what my schedule looks like, how that day is gonna go. This is a chronic illness thing I've preached that I am now fully like having the come to Jesus moment with for myself. For my final kind of set here, if you look at a lot of my videos from the end of, I think maybe the first to the second quarter of 2023, I learned that I needed to reincorporate work back into my personal planner because I learned that I value seeing my work and my personal life at a glance. Problem in the past with having them both in the same planner was I was having trouble with boundaries, but now dialysis is kind of the thing that sucks my life up and everything else needs to be juggled around that, which doesn't really give me like a time frame each day that I can devote to work. It's sort of like I do some work here and some personal here and some work here and some personal here, as opposed to what I really prefer, which is a structure for work each day, but I'm not in a place where I can do that at the moment. So it's important to be able to see everything at a glance so that I can juggle my life appropriately. So that's really important to me. What I don't need, what I don't value, and I learned this also within the last six months as I reincorporated work back into my personal planner, with my Notion system and everything else, I don't need to analog plan all of my work. I need to make note of important things that I need to check off that day. But generally speaking, I just need to have an idea of sort of what needs to get done each day, but I don't need to get hella granular with it in my, my paper planner because I already have it granular in Notion. I don't, need to I don't need to double it up. It goes back to the convenience thing, right? I need everything to be convenient. And what I need at a glance is to have an idea of what it's gonna look like, but then use Notion to really help me get through each day as things come. So those are the things I learned this year after being on dialysis about my personal planning systems, my ways of approaching planning, my ways of approaching my life. These are all things that I am going to use to take me into the next year and try to navigate it in a way that is a little more even. I can't control the ups and downs with dialysis, but I can have a small amount of control over the ups and downs of the rest of my life. Not a lot, but a little bit of control. And that might help kind of keep the boat from like going all over the place all of the time. Like I said, I recommend you give this kind of exercise a try. It can be really helpful. And keep all of this in mind when I post my planner lineup in another week or so, when I let you know what I'm gonna use for next year. You're going to see a lot of these lessons reflected in that video. Anyway, like I said, do the reflecting yourself. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What is something you learned this year that you value about planning? And what is something you don't value about planning? Now, forever, or anymore? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, friends, peace.